What is going on, my beautiful people? I know today's video we are going to be going over my new fish finder, but I had to just give a quick shout out to my wife because she is absolutely awesome. So as you guys probably don't know, I am going to be turning 25 this upcoming March. So my lovely wife created this advent calendar for my birthday. Basically, it's a countdown to 25 where each day I get to open a cup and it has a corresponding letter with a present. So far, I've gotten a couple snacks. I've gotten, I know that there's some fish lures in there. I know there's a couple books. I know there's a bunch of different stuff in here, but I don't know what cup corresponds with the witch gift. So I just love this idea. Um, I had also requested a fish finder. She said she would get it for me and it was in here and I knew what number it was or which letter, but I just had to draw it. So yesterday I actually was lucky enough to find the V only took four attempts, shout out to me. And so now we have the fish finder. So we're gonna be able to do that unboxing. We're gonna be able to get it set up in the kayak. And then hopefully soon we'll be able to get out on the water and go fishing. Let's go ahead and get into the unboxing. So this is the packaging that our Garmin Striker Vivid CV Plus with the transducer comes in. Um, on the front here, it's got a display of the actual size of our unit with the screen. Of course, it has the side views here on the side, and then on the back, it has a little bit more information about this unit. It's got a 4.3 inch display, 480 by seven, or I'm sorry, 480 by 272 pixel screen resolution, sunlight readable, and highly sensitive GPS, quick draw contours, you can put waypoints, and it's a fish finder with built-in Garmin Chirp traditional and Garmin Chirp clear view scanning sonar with color palettes and built-in GPS. So the, the chirp and the clear view is the reason I wanted to go with this one. Plus it does not break the bank and uh, I know that there's that live scope and everything else coming out nowadays. That's too fancy for me. This is my first fish finder and I think it's gonna do a great thing on the kayak. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get into this. Woo wee! Here we go. All right, so right off the front, you have the unit itself with some sort of mounting mechanism here on the back love the packaging here pick this up so your unit is very protected during travel we have a pack of cables i imagine this hooks to the battery and i think we're gonna have to do some wiring with this but this looks like it'll plug into the unit um, so there is some sort of wiring system for it this is the mount that's going to mount to the kayak itself. We have a package of hardware that we'll go through and then a couple of manuals. So let's, oh, we also got some screws in here. Let's get the box out of the way. All right, so in our package here, we have some more screws as well as it looks like some sort of brackets potentially for mounting or for holding in, probably for holding the wires in place. This is some sort of rail system it may look like. Not quite sure, I'm sure there's instructions somewhere in on all this stuff. Maybe it's something to mount the transducer with. Could be another mounting system. Again, another mounting option. I assume there's probably a couple different ways you can rig this up. And then this right here is our transducer. So this is gonna plug in to our wiring, which will hook to a battery source. And then we have the transducer, which is actually fairly small. I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger, but it's fairly small transducer. Of course, it's wrapped up in bubble wrap. I'm not gonna undo that for now, but we will in a future video. And then, of course, you have your instructions as far as probably mounting and setting this thing up. So there is our quick unboxing of the Garmin Striker 4 Plus with the Chirp Clear View. Um, I'm really excited to go ahead and get this thing mounted to our kayak, which we will be doing in this video. And hopefully we'll be able to find some more fish with it once we get it out on the water. So let's go ahead. We're going to get to our shop and we are gonna see how we can mount all of this stuff right here on my kayak. So let's get to it. So this is the Bonafide 
dry compartment that mounts in the center of the kayak with this part that sticks in the water. So this is where I'm planning on mounting my transducer. That way this will sit in the water and then when I can move my boat or whatever, I can just take this out and I'll have the whole unit. I wanna mount the fish finder on this part here. That way it'll sit on top and I'll be able to see it while I'm in my kayak, but it'll all stay in this storage container and I can take it in and out of my kayak. Also, I want to be able to, because I float down rivers and stuff, I want to be able to take the transducer on and off of the bottom of here. That way, if I am going down the river and there's a potential that, you know, it might get scraped by rocks or whatever, I can go ahead and take it off. So we're just trying to figure out what's the best way to go about mounting this with all the different pieces that they have. I'm going to use silicone screws and, you know, anything to make sure that I keep this thing as waterproof as possible. So let's get into it. All right, so off the bat, I wanted to take a look and see what brackets that they have. So they have this bracket, which will house this thing, and the transducer then mounts to this. That way it still is somewhat movable, and you can take it on and off of the storage compartment. So that's kind of my plan for this so far. And then this is what the fish finder is gonna look like sitting on top. So that's the Striker 4 unit. I'm hopefully gonna have it sitting in there and we'll be able to drill some holes in the top of this to have the wiring come out and battery, transducer, everything's gonna be mounted to this. So that's kind of my plan. Um, and I don't know if I want this to sit further back or if I want it to sit a little closer, that way it's a little easier to see. I'll have to figure that out with how everything works inside of our compartment here. All right, so it looks like step number one is gonna be to put this mount on our transducer. So we're gonna go ahead and get it open. And here is our transducer. It's a little bit smaller than I was actually anticipating it to be. But, got a little sawdust. Well, let's make sure we get this good and clean. And then, looks like it's going to mount on like this right here. Perfect. Now we get a package of these little screws and star washers, and this is what it recommends that we use for this part. So as you can see, five screws, five washers, five holes. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a screwdriver and get this all put together. Next step is we are gonna mount this onto this bracket, which is mounted to the transducer. And one thing that's nice is they've actually got everything prepackaged. So for the next step, they had everything that you need already in a single baggie. So it makes it pretty quick and easy to go ahead and just get this all connected. For time's sake, I decided to go with the rest of the video to do a little bit of me talking over the video that you're gonna be seeing on screen. Right now you can see that I am putting in that bolt and it was a little bit tricky because there was like a nesting part for the bolt itself. So you couldn't really use a wrench. Here we're just marking the holes that we're gonna drill to mount that bracket onto the bottom of the tripod. And then we're gonna use silicone here, put it in the holes. That way everything is gonna stay as waterproof as possible. Um, you can also use like marine sealant or anything like that. We didn't have any of that on hand. We did have some silicone and going back to the plumbing days, decided to go ahead and put that on there just to make sure that we didn't have any leaks. We got everything bracketed on. We got everything bracketed on and next we had to drill another hole for the wiring to come off that transducer to run back up through the dry pod so we could hook it to the fish finder. So what we did was we drilled a little pilot hole as you saw and then the bigger hole for the wiring to run through. Next up we just pulled all that wiring through the dry pod itself and uh, we used some zip ties to kind of keep it all bunched together and everything like that. And then they had a little wiring cover. That way you could sit it over and make it not look super ugly. So we put some more silicone on the hole as well as that wire. And then we made sure to drill that bracket on place as well. And then of course we had to make sure that it was nice and pretty and clean. So next up we had to decide where we wanted to put the fish finder itself and I was trying to decide whether I wanted it further up on the dry pod or if I wanted it closer to me. Ultimately I chose to go with closer to me so we're going to mark the holes that way we could get those drilled in. We drilled in one small hole and uh, siliconed it. Put that bracket on top and we went ahead and got it seated that way we could find the location for our other two holes and make sure it was nice and level. 
and then we just drilled those two little pilot holes and these had self-driving screws but we still wanted to put just a small little pilot hole just to make sure got everything in line and then we had to drill another hole for the wiring that's going to run back up through the transducer so we had to put our battery cables as well as the transducer wire through there and then we took some electrical tape and wrapped it around the two wires right here that way there would be kind of like a stop that way all the wires would you know sit where we wanted them to and not rotate around also it was going to give a better seal on the top of the dry pod that way water wasn't going to get in there so we put that and then we put of course some more silicone just to make sure that we are as waterproof as possible so one thing is we do have to fix the wiring so we can hook it up to the battery but other than that we're just about done got some electrical tape and silicone on here to keep it from leaking got our extra wiring in here already got the battery fish finder is mounted as well as this transducer so overall we are almost done here once we get this battery hooked up we should be good to go so not too hard of a process hopefully it'll all work and we'll be able to get it out on the water soon so for the wiring itself we decided to go with alligator clamps instead of a traditional kind of battery thing and here's kind of where i show that and we just can clip them onto the battery just like so and then it'll work perfectly fortunately enough at this point i have been able to get the fish finder out on the water and it works great i love this setup um, and i'm going to have a video soon to come of us testing it out on the water here's where i turned it on and went through some of the setting up and it said the transducer wasn't plugged in properly so i had to go back and replug that in and make sure that it worked all right well, I mean, we got it set up and working, so next we'll go and get it back in the kayak, and hopefully we'll get out on the water soon. All right, so this is our finished product. As you can see, we had the fish finder sitting on top of the pod for the bonafide kayak, and we have our transducer mounted to the bottom here. Um, part of the reason I wanted to do this like this as well is I can take this bolt out right here and take my transducer off. Um, or I can just unscrew the transducer from this plate. That way, if I'm going down the river or anything like that, I can take the transducer off without feeling a need or a concern for this to scrub the bottom. Also, you know, when I'm loading or unloading the kayak, I can just take the pod out. That way, I'm not going to mess up the transducer as well. I also have that option if I'm going down the river just to leave the pod out for the day um, and, and not mess up my transducer as well. That's why I wanted to be able to make this as mobile as possible because I do go up and down the river quite often as well as go to lakes. But when I go to lakes, I'll be able to pop in this and have the fish finder and everything else. Another reason I really like the Garmin is I can unplug this and it has a quick release mechanism right here. You push that down and you can slide off this whole piece so you just have this flat black mounting th uh, housing that'll stay connected to the black box. So overall, the only two things that will stay on here full time are this mounting housing right here, just this part, everything above where my finger is comes off. And then of course this mounting right here where this bolt is, everything below it comes off so you'll leave this right here. But I'm not too concerned with those getting damaged. Um, they're built pretty well and they're hard plastic. So as long as I don't completely destroy a rock, we should be good to go. But that is my Garmin Striker 4 Plus clear view that is now mounted and ready to go fishing on my Bonafide SS127 water storage box. And we can go ahead and we'll put this in my kayak. That way you'll see what it looks like sitting in the kayak. And uh, we are good to go. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'll meet you guys at my kayak in just a second. That way we can get this put in and you can see what it'll look like. This is my Bonafide SS127. Here is the indention for my dry pod. So as you can see, it sits in here. It goes down to where it looks like a squirrel ate some acorns or a rodent or something ate some acorns. But this goes down into the water when the kayak is in the water. So as you can see, we can take this. Our transducer should sit right in this hole and hopefully not all of it will yeah so it is kind of a little bit sitting on the transducer because it usually will sit snug in there but that's what it's going to do i'm going to have my fish finder right here so i'll be able to look at the fish finder maneuver the fish finder 
all seated in my seat while fishing so I'll be able to tell what the fish are doing um, and everything like that. So I'm super excited to have this addition to the kayak. That's where it's going to sit and I'm going to go ahead and take it back out as well because I don't want that transducer to just be touching the ground. But again, that's what it looks like. Fish finder on this side, transducer over here and it's all in that one unit so I can take it, move it around if I need to or anything like that. But anyways, guys, hope you have enjoyed today's video. We are going to go ahead and get in the verse of the week because that is something that we like to do on this channel. And if you've made it this far in the video or if you've liked the video and you have not subscribed, which I'm sure if you're watching this video, most of you have not, please do hit that subscribe button. Make it go from red to gray and turn on the bell notifications. I do a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing content, and we also like to spread the good word of God above. So I hope that you like that. And if you do, become a beautiful person, hit that subscribe button, and let's hang out for a couple more days. But anyways, guys, we will see you with the verse of the week.